is we quickly adopt other cultures instead of actually telling our own story. We've got amazing stories here in Zimbabwe, but we quickly then adopt the Bentley life of America, the champagne popping life of America. That's not who we are. Music should be able to relate. It's something that has been done or been, is being done. In it used to be done. I think when I was in high school, there used to be like a, a festival for drama club. I'm not sure if it's still there, but it's, it's, it's there because they would give you like workshops and yeah. I think it's, I'm not... Welcome to another episode of Moments with Nyinge Terai. Um, I'm so excited about the journey that we're going together and what has been happening behind the scenes. Uh, we've had a lot of comments from you guys that you've been calling us, writing to us, asking for different people, asking for different questions, um, areas that you want us to discuss. But over and above that, I'm just excited to see this community grow. You know, uh, it's really so much fun just to have the interaction. You know, sometimes when you're doing something, you think no one is watching or no one is even enjoying this. But when I see the feedback coming back, it really gets us excited as a team. So today we've brought another interesting guest uh, for you guys. Um, Rain, welcome. Thank you for having me. Before we go any further and you tell me who you're about, whatever, Rain, mm. why did your parents make you Rain? <laughs> because... Uh, not young enough to have that name or old enough, but yeah. I mean, you know, like it's only little girls who are like five, six, where we hear rain. Mm. Tell me about your name. I feel like they were very interesting people. They wanted to experiment. So instead of calling me blessing, I think they just said rain because it falls. It's a blessing from God from the sky. So instead of blessing, it's just rain. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And when you're at school, you never had... Well, I actually have a, my first name is Talent. So that was mostly like for my school. And when I grew up, you know, and wanted to be a cool girl, I then in said, okay, let's go with Rain now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Mm. So who is Rain? Well, Rain is a cocktail. I basically am a cocktail. I do a whole lot of things. Um, I'm very passionate about the art industry, um, music, exactly, and film and filming as well. So Rain is an artist and also a business person, a music business person and PR. Because as much as I was an artist, I also saw the gap of not having PR and the business side of um, stuff in Zim. And I was like, okay, let me then try that as well. And it's been working out. So, yeah. Hmm. Let's start with Rain the Artist. Mm-hmm. What? Why? Why? Um... My family. So my dad was a musician a long time ago. <laughs> okay. He, well, he wasn't a popular one, but Why he was doing what, what, what <laughs> he's got. Look. He's got this one song um, that I know was popular in Sim. It featured like Anna Rocky and all of those people. So just growing up, I grew up in Chiwezi and, you know, that's where the, his studio was and his friends were Anna Kuligan and Kalabash, Anna Ropoid. Uh, Anna Maskiri and all these people were literally there when I was growing up and they'll bring me flowers and call me, oh, our little daughter. So just seeing them and their vibe got me thinking, okay, I really do love music. And also just generally, my family is a very music-oriented family, um, reggae culture. So I grew up listening to a whole lot of deep reggae. So growing up, that's, I was just like, oh, you know what? I want to be the Madonna of Zim. Oh, wow. <laughs> but I didn't then do music. I then did acting. And I started acting from high school till I, got, I came here to Harare. And then I was like, oh, you know what? I want to go back to music. But instead of me being the musician, I want to be the behind the scene of propelling a musician. Mm. Yeah. You know what's exciting? Um you know the way you say that you grew up with these guys coming mm -hmm. and you wanted to be the next? <laughs> yeah. I mean, for me, you know, just, just having that at a young age mm -hmm. and then, then deciding to go into acting, then deciding to help the artists from behind. Mm -hmm. What is it that you learned from seeing those guys coming to your dad's studio? Mm -hmm. Who's your dad's? What's your dad's name? <laughs> My dad used to go by Blackfire. 
Okay. Yeah, but it's it's a long time ago. Okay. I I don't think he wasn't mainstream. But the people that know him are obviously the older generation of like Anastana, Ana Rocky, Ana, and it's that generation of artists. Mm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. So tell me, like, from what you learned, having these guys around you, what is it that you saw that you re- that made you realize that you wanted to do what you want you're doing now, helping from the background? Um. It's not that I saw, it's just maybe experiencing the music. Because even when I was just by myself in the room, I would just be singing uh, in the mirror. Like, no more necessary rhymes. With the, I wouldn't sing them with a normal voice. <laughs> I'll be vocalizing on them and doing exper- experiments on them. So, also just how, I think, how it made them feel. They were really in their happy zone. They were really not having a care just making music just creating music and the and the fact that you can create something that actually resonates with somebody and make somebody actually shift emotionally was just exciting for me to say okay you know I also want to make people feel happy I also want to make people feel some type of way so even like during dinner after dinner and we would pray to go to sleep I'm like oh I'm the worship person so yeah I'm gonna sing a worship song and then you guys can pray so it was just like that growing up. Oh, because I just wanted people to feel some type of way. Yeah. So you never had went for formal training or anything like that? No, I never, I never went for formal training because I never then went into like the music professionally. Mm. So to me, then was just like the only formal training I then got is when I got in the music business side of things. And obviously you have to know what a musician has to go through etc but then not for me to sing but for me to then help somebody else and why didn't you pursue the the acting i'm sure you were a very good actress (laughs) why did you leave that um it wasn't really making any money for me here in zim um i was really passionate about it but then also you know i moved out of the house at 18 and i'm coming to a big city everything was just wow you know responsibilities bills etc Mm -hmm. So as much as I was passionate driven by other things, I also needed to actually work and get proper jobs where I can, you know, pay bills and stuff like that. So for me, when I did try acting, I noticed, good, okay, I'm not really making, I'm making fame, but I'm not making sense in my pocket. Oh, so I was just like, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Right. So, <laughs> so I was just like, okay, let me do something that people can actually really pay me for. That's now the PR side, the filmmaking, because I also do filmmaking. Um, gonna show the story of Mbea Nehanda. So it, to me, it's like I get paid and it's like I also do what I like. So it's passion and getting money as well. So, yeah, with acting, I really hope one day I'll maybe get a role where I actually make money from. I'm sure you will. I will. <laughs> I want to dissect what you said. Mm-hmm. So there's a, quite a lot of things that I want us to touch on. Mm-hmm. For one, you left home at 18. Yeah. Left Chiredi to come to Harare. What led you to leave home? So that was now Mashingo. Okay. Right. Uh, my 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 dad's family is in Mashingo. So I was staying there for, for high school. Um, I don't know. I think my family is also like, if you want to fly, fly. You know, it's, it's, um, we're not really like, they're not really strict in terms of, no, we want you to do this. We want you to do this. Cause it's like, it's your life. If you feel this is the journey that you want to take, make sure you don't regret it and make sure that it's, you know, it's lucrative. It, you get something from it. So even just seeing from my dad, my dad also left the house at a young age and he went into hunting school and now he's like one of the big people in, in Kruger National Park. So it's like, Okay, so if he can do it, I can do my passion as well and become like a big person as well. So I guess that uh, mindset led me to say, okay, let me now go to the city. Yeah. And how was your first done. experience coming to Harare? You're a young lady. Yeah. You've grown up in a small town. The experience. I'm, I'm not going to say it was hard to network because mm. of the background that I already had in music. So it was just me coming in and everybody's like, oh, yeah, yeah, his daughter. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So it, it wasn't like hard for me to get introduced to people or to introduce myself to people. Um, I think just the whole transition of 
now I'm crossing roads with like a lot of cars. Yeah. <laughs> that was to me like, oh, this is real. But um, it was really fun and also depressing. I'm also a young kid. I'm also trying to figure out um, just making sure that I'm I'm still principled in the way I was raised, even though the city was not nice. So that struggle to keep calm in a very busy and hectic city was very depressing for me. Um, but I managed to come out of it because people were really welcoming. Mm. Yeah. What were your high highs and your low lows in that time, that transition time from mm -hmm. small town girl to big town yeah. girl? <laughs> I think my my high high was easily being around tables that other people would dream of being. Like, I remember me coming in, Amara Brown was like, oh, you're so pretty, you need to be on my video. And, you know, it's Amara Brown. I didn't even audition or anything for it. She's just like, you're so pretty, you need to. So it's for me, having people actually doing stuff like that for me in my career was so amazing for me because I know how it is to stand in a line trying to audition for something. It's hectic. I know how it is trying to speak to like your in people that inspire you to your fan and you're trying to speak to your favorite artist. It's hard. But for me, it was just like a walk in the park. But my low lows, you know, women in the industry. Yeah, that was my law because men are not nice sometimes. You Tell know, one example. <laughs> men are not nice. You know, instead of people actually hearing what I'm trying to say, in terms of your brand, I'm like, oh, I think we should do this with your brand. They look at you and like, so you want to get drinks tonight? Mm. I'm like, dude. And it's always like, ah, if you you know some opportunities, like I could I could tell some, op I didn't get some opportunities because I didn't give mm. some opportunities. Mm. So that for me was just very depressing. Because, you know, I'm also trying to make money. I'm also mm. trying to pay rent. Mm. And you guys are not giving me these jobs because I'm not sleeping with you or mm. I'm not uh, going out and drinking alcohol with you or mm. I'm not um, a wild cat, mm. a wild girl. So it was very hard because it was always, ah, you're too much of a good girl. That statement, mm. I heard it a lot. Mm. And what did that do to you? And it, it was just like, wait, so do you guys want me to, like, I mean, be wild, go to the clubs and dance on the table for me to get these opportunities? Mm. But I was just like, no, if, if other doors are still opening because I'm a good girl, I think I'll rather stick to the long way. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So I just decided to push through. Wow. And what are those, le the learnings around that? Because I can see that there's, there were some pivotal points. Mm. So what are the learning from you? I think that that's... could tell other young girls who are coming to Arahari from mm -hmm. Mashingo. Where... I did learn that patience really pays. It really, really pays. And I did, like, it's funny. I used to say I'm a very prayerful person. But in that moment, I really became a prayerful person. Because then I really needed, um, you know, you can speak to your family over the phone, but they're not as close as you would want them to be. So I really became a prayerful person to just say, okay, instead of crying or instead of overthinking, I'm just going to start praying now. I don't know how long I'm going to pray for, but until I feel good. Mm. So I think I'm always saying to this, could put God first. Whatever religion um, you follow, just make sure you put you put it first because it is a very comfort, like a, it brings comfort mm. and it really takes away the overthinking because I... I overthink. <laughs> I overthink and overthink about why I'm overthinking. <laughs> like, <laughs> so having something to hope for, having something that you know can comfort you is very, very important. Mm. Yeah. You know when you said, oh, no. <laughs> "Don't worry, I'm a recovering overthinker." You know when you said you overthink and you overthink why you overthinking? Exactly. Yes, it's so crazy. Are you, you're speaking to the <laughs> reformed. I used to. I I was like that as well, mm. and I get what you're saying. And because of that, um, how did you manage like to get out of that the overthinking? Mm -hmm. And also, how did you utilize the power of your relationships um, to be where you are today? Um, for the second one, mm. consistency. I didn't give up. I mean, if I had, I wouldn't be here. Consistency. I would wake up, go and knock on doors, call people, go to events that I know I'm going to meet a certain person. And I would actually show up. 
And I know a lot of people now that I work, there are relationships that I have since 2017 that they say, oh, I'm Yeah. <laughs> because I would say, yo, bro, what's up? So I want to do a music video for you. Yo, bro, I heard your song. I think this is a dope music video you should do. Yo, bro. And the, until they were like, what are you saying? Chew, yeah, quite your, mm. chew, you know. So consistency, I did not give up because I was like, I can't go home and tell them I failed and I would have lost like what two one two years no i need these people need to give me the job Mm -hmm. (laughs) these people need to work with me and hear what i'm saying and for sure they did like i worked with the biggest artists that sometimes i want to cry because it's like when i see how the fans re react to them i'm like i'm part of that (laughs) <laughs> that let's get into that <laughs> now i want to get into the meaty juicy part yeah take me through some of your biggest projects that you have done mm-hmm. and what what lessons you you learn from them and some of your failure projects that you did mm-hmm. and take me through those the film the music videos who you, who you worked with mm-hmm. what were your the greatest lessons what were your learning points and what your regrets what were your regrets? Yeah. Um, I did work with a lot of artists. Um, so I started off as Black's assistant. Black's is a videographer, a very dope one. I started off as his assistant. And of course, because he was popping at that time, right, people were flocking to him. So I got to work with amazing artists. Like I mentioned, Amara Brown became an amazing sister. Um, you know, just getting on her project, being open more doors for me um i worked with indicata as well he's a very dope person with indicata i learned more of the corporate side of filming um which now i incorporate both the blacks is more of a very creative vibrant and the indicata is more of corporate so just infusing the both was very um, awesome for me um killer t oh my god i love that guy because He actually heard me, gave me a chance and said, you know what, I've been seeing what you're doing. This is my brand. And he gave me a music video. I shot one of his music video directed in Bari. And for me, that was like, it's a bit not. (laughs) (laughs) For me, that was like, damn, Kira T. Like, this is a big artist, you know. And um, that was really because we did it with Indicata. For me, that was like, yes. Okay, then. And then um, I did the Kure remix for Aisha. Mm. Um, I did, I worked with Enzo Aisha. He's actually like my brother now. I worked with him a long time ago. We would just brainstorm about different things for his career. Um, So most of his projects as well, we just sit down and brainstorm. And he's such an amazing person because he's somebody that can call me up to say, I'm thinking about this. What do you think? And just having that big of an artist want to appreciate your opinion on something that he's trying to do is is a blessing, honestly, because not everybody can get a call to say, I want your opinion. But then, you know, him doing that is awesome for me. Um, I worked with, um, I don't want to say a lot because if I miss other people... <laughs> But let me think. <laughs> Pop Ten. I worked with Pop Ten as his manager here in Sim, and it was a great journey. So I, I actually, I think, in my opinion, personally, before people attack me, yeah. when lockdown came, I feel, and I know, <laughs> that I, I was the first person to actually do virtual shows. So I did the versus show. Um. With the one house this is so we didn't go there we didn't go there tv and um you know we had enzo enzo Aisha versus pop 10 we had t guns versus noble styles and we didn't think it was gonna pop but it popped oh, and then it made pop 10 pop and then his career started taking off and i'm there i'm his manager and we're working together um you know i'm i'm directing music videos I'm doing his music business side now. This is when I'm actually going into meetings, talking to corporate ETC. That was amazing. And then along in that journey, Anita Jackson also came in. And now I had two of the biggest artists. And 
Yo, I was feeling good, girl. <laughs> I was feeling good. You know, it was an amazing journey. I even shot one of the music videos with the phone. And, you know, it was like, oh, I did this with iPhone 11. Like, I'm creative. And mm. people really started really saying, okay, you know what? She's got something going on. Because you can now tell from the phone calls. You can now tell from people engaging with you, people looking looking for you, uh, looking for your business. And that was one of my biggest highs as well I did learn to be patient I did learn that it's not easy to manage a human being you know just like how I have got moods they also have got moods so now it's it's you have to be really patient really naturing you have to be understanding like really mature and understand good okay why is this person acting like this and how can I maneuver the situation and you have to be a problem solver because, man, these artists will just wake up and do something that you need to think quickly, quickly. How do I make sure that the public doesn't react to this? And so, yeah, I, I learned to be quick on my feet. Um, I learned, And through working with artists, I met a lot of media people as well. You know, I got in touch with like radio people, um, TV houses and now I've got good relationships with them as well. Um, Lady K, I love Lady K. You know, she's one person that if I go to South Africa, she's just like, tag along and we go to cool places. That girl is popping. We go to cool places and we meet cool people. The last time I went, she was there randomly interviewing young Stana. And I'm like, oh, so this is what you do? You know, so um, just having those type of people wanting you to be in their space, it's amazing. I can talk all day. Wow. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. <laughs> I'm actually, you know what, what, when I'm listening to you, I'm just thinking, okay, I'll talk to him. You know how mm-hmm. you just think, you just see a video, and you're like, oh, mm-hmm. interesting. And now when you see the face behind the video, yeah, 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 and the person, mm-hmm. I think it makes a huge difference because I think when we are out here as listeners, viewers, we just think this person makes they just yeah. they just make themselves, you know. They just mm-hmm. wake up and they sing. As long as they can sing, everything else happens. Yeah. And then we forget about the business the, side the, of things. Exactly. How would you encourage another young person who wants to get into what you're doing? I think you have to have a passion for it. You know, I I really feel like art is a calling. Um, before we even look at the business side, I feel like you just being an artist and want want to speak to people through art should be a calling. Because there are so many people with good voices, but they're not singers, you know. So you really need to have a calling for whatever it is you want to do. And just know, like, if you're getting into it, it's just as a career, like being an accountant, being a lawyer, it, you put as much effort. You need to research. You need to go to school for it. You need to do so much for you to actually be able to live off it. Because in Zim, as much as we would want to just have passion, but you also need to make money from the passion for you to survive. Because, mm-hmm. you know, this is where we end up having people depressed, you know, taking drugs and because the money is not money, even though you are talented. So I feel like you really need to have a passion for it. And you need to be a person that, oh, I don't know, whatever comes your way, you need to know that you can tackle it. Because giving up is not an option. Once you're in, where else can you go? Like, it's not like um, I'm a musician for five years and then, I, you know, I can't do this anymore. Let me become a waitress. If it doesn't happen like that, you need to actually be consistent with your fans. Your fans are your family. If they speak to you, if they actually appreciate you and say, man, we are paying to come to your show, then you deserve to be consistent with them. They deserve for you to be consistent. So I feel like consistency is key as well. And if you want to work with artists, you need to be patient. You really need to be patient and you need to know what you're doing as well because people will look at you crazy and you got quickly replaced, like quickly replaced by the new young, you know, brainy person comes up. They quickly replace you because art is moving. Um, The digital world is moving at a very fast pace. So if you can't catch up with it, it will leave you behind. So you need to be able to wake up and know what I learned yesterday still needs to be enhanced every day i need to enhance my skill every day i need to enhance my talent mm. yeah so i'm looking at artists i'm looking at a brand and brand 
And obviously I've worked with product brands. I've now worked with human brands. <laughs> yeah. When you're working with human brands, your artists, what are the key factors that you look at, um, especially for you, mm -hmm. when you decide, okay, I'll work with this one? What is it that you look at in terms of the brand mm -hmm. to help you get into that space? Right now, could, could data, I used to just be like, if you're talented, let's work. <laughs> but right now for me, I want to be able to be convinced by your vision. Because you can send me a song and say, yeah, sister in Chimbotele is, but then, <laughs> you know, what you what is your vision? I definitely love to jump on your train, you know, and not be the, the driver. I want you to wake up and say, you know what, what's our schedule today? And that just that drive makes me say, okay, I can think and make schedules around your brand because you are actually willing to work. You know, there are some times where you would have to call someone, Uribi, wake up, we need to go to work. Oh my God, this client is waiting. Oh my God, the show, the promoter is calling. I can't chase you for your vision. It's your passion. I, I should just be there to guide you and say, okay, cool. I like the song you put. Maybe let's do this. Maybe let's set it this way. So I really look at how, what you have done even before you called me up for business because it then shows me equity. Okay, so this person is actually driven to continue because I don't, I don't like them to be dropped. I'm a very, I, I get attached. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't like to just be dropped. So I need to make sure you're trying to go the long way. So I definitely look at your, your vision and just your discipline, background discipline now because now we've got the internet. We can research what did you tweet in 2017? Because I need to know what type of person you are. Mm. So I'll definitely research around just your character and your personality. How are you going to be like when we meet certain people? You know, us being in Bali or us being in some other places is different. You know, if we go for a corporate meeting at Mikkel's, that's a different vibe from when we go to a club for a performance. That's a different vibe when we go to children like high schools for performance. So what type of a person are you in those situations? And even if you don't have like a good personality, but if you're willing to adjust and actually show me good, okay, you know what? I can change. You know what? I can. And also if you're not substance driven, we can work because it's very hard to work with somebody that is so dependent on substance. Someone will tell you, I, I can't go record before I smoke go, or I can't go on the stage now. I'm boss. I need the smoke. So that for me is like, so you are letting that control you? I mean, I'm up here at 2 a.m. in, I don't know, downtown somewhere. You're telling me you can't get on that stage? My feet are cold. What are you doing? So it's like I need to research all of those things to make sure that you're at par with my vision as well. Because I'm trying to now also grow as a brand. I think I've learned enough. I haven't learned 100%. I'm still willing to learn. But I feel like I'm now at a place where my brand can now come out and say, okay, I did ABC and you working with me, it has to make sense because I don't want you to tarnish me. Like how you wouldn't want me to tarnish you. Mm. I mean, if I was out here doing blessers and boys, you wouldn't want to be working so, with me. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so just as much as you wouldn't want me to tarnish your brand, do that for me as well. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's really key. And I think a lot of people, as you say, you know, it becomes all about the money. Yeah. And then they forget. I think the, the biggest and the most important thing that you said is, I want to run on with your vision. Because mm -hmm. I think when you don't have a vision. We're not going anywhere. Anyway. Yeah. Even the Bible was clear, you know. <laughs> Without a vision, we perish, you know. So mm -hmm. I think that is really, really important. You, you spoke about the music and you also spoke about the film side. Mm -hmm. so, uh, tell me more about the film side. What you do with the film side and who have you worked with? And what have you learned from that mm -hmm. that um, other young people can jump on? Yeah. So when I finished high school, I got a job at Charles Austin Theatre in Mashingo. Um, I was a stage manager. And so. the theatres in Mashingo? Yeah. I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I grew up in Shao and I the theatre in Mashingo. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure if it's still functioning, but it was there. And, you know, we did a lot of theatre acting. You know, I was stage manager. So first I would just see, right? And I didn't even know I liked acting. But when I was in Form 6, I actually won like the best actress for the Mashingo district. And I was like, oh, so I can do this? You people are giving me awards for this? I'm like, okay, let's do this. So I got a job um, 
we were I was working there doing stage management and also working for an NGO at the same time. And I really got into, you know, the whole acting thing. You know, I was the girl running around cleaning the stage, running with outfits and what. But then now I'm like, okay, can you give me a script? Let me try. And then they gave me a script and we started going. And I liked people. Every Friday, people would pay to actually come see us act. And that was awesome, you know. And then um, one of my friends, Sydney Tairarashi, then said, you know what, I'm trying to do film. Why don't you like be in my camp and let's do film together? What can you do? And I realized I'm so good at management. I'm so good at just like uh, the logistics and planning. I was like, oh, I want to be a line producer. Cool name. I go good it. <laughs> and then I got I got I got the job, you know, and then we worked we started working with local films on Afara Zipu, right? And then we moved You worked on that <laughs> yeah. And then we moved to come to Harare. He's doing Gwenare Show, the movie. Um it's it's touring on festivals. And then we did that the story of Mbuya Nehanda where for the unveiling of the statue and we did uh, we're working on becoming madam boss so i've always been like a producer and a logistics person um in in the film industry and that's where i learn most of my script writing that's where i learn because he's a very he's a very talented person so he's somebody that you definitely would learn a lot of things from him so i learned just basic directing so the directing that i even put cool music videos because of the film background uh, the scripting, writing my treatments for music videos because of the film background. And um, Michael Banda from Charles Austin Theatre, he was a good director. Like, he would teach me how to cry on cue, teach me how to do certain emotions. And it was very, it was very good. So even me being able to sit down for interviews is because of that, <laughs> of that background. <laughs> yeah, because I used to have major stage fright and I'm an introvert. So just me being here is like, uh, I would have been shaking, but I'm fine now. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You just said something now, now that I think I wanted to touch on. When you said um, what you learned has helped you now to be able to speak in public. and uh -huh. Don't you think you should take this to high schools? What would happen if you went to high schools and, and the theater like big like this, mm -hmm. you know, so that people are not... Is it something that has been done or is being, is being done in school? It used to be done. I think when I was in high school, there used to be like a, a festival for drama clubs. I'm not sure if it's still there, but it's, it's, it's there because they would give you like workshops and yeah. I think it's, I'm not sure if it's still there, but that would be a good idea. Mm. That would be a good idea. Mm. Tell me, you're, you're so young. Well, you are young. <laughs> <laughs> Way too from now. I think now I, I really need to focus on being a brand. Like, do you know sometimes I'm, 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 maybe I'm in a colleague and you hear people talking about you or your work and you're like, I'm here, but you can't really, recognize. yeah, you can't really say that we will be pompous. Um, so I feel like now I really want to attach my work to my face to actually work and say, okay, guys, so you hear DJ Tamuk. That was me. I need you to know that it was me. Also, yeah. So I need, I think I need to now match my face with the work that I've done. Um, I, I mean, I deserve the credit and the appreciation and the flowers. I want some flowers. So <laughs> I think, um, yeah, because also I'm trying to really go into the corporate world, um, how to put the art in the corporate world, how to work with art, with um, corporates using my art background. So, it's, it's important for my face to be there. I mean, when people, when other people get ads, I'll be like, you know, I could do that also. So maybe I should. And instead of just watching, you know, other people getting influencer gigs, maybe I should do it as well. <laughs> so I think that's the next step for me. I am working with brands. I'm managing a very big brand. I'm not sure if I should say it online. But yeah, I'm managing a very big brand. Um, and I still love doing it. So I feel like I'll continue doing it. But then I also want to be a very big brand myself as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very, very, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, um, as I was listening to you now talking about uh, becoming a very big brand and the people that you have worked with and what you have done, even when you said DJ, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> 
I yeah. I truly believe that um, there's that X factor that you have. Mm. What drives you every morning? I'm trying to because I I can see it. You as you're talking and what drives you? What what like rain when you wake up in the morning? What drives? I think I I'm, I want to make a difference. I'm a very like if you sit down and listen to the music I listen to or watch the podcasts I watch, you would literally not believe it. You just be like, are you not too young for these things? You know, like I'm a very, I want to be a life changing person. I want to be able to change people's lives through what I can do. I I don't want to start preaching, but I feel like if God gave me a talent, I should use it for the good of the people. So I want to speak for the people through what I do. I want people, communities to be able to be changed, to say, you know, my kid bought a house for me as a mom through music or our communities has changed through music. We are, I want people to actually change their lives through what I help them with. I just don't want to have success, like individual success, where I say, oh yeah, I did this and now I got a Grammy and all of this, but I want to be able for it to be a Zimbabwean success to be able to say it's an African success through this person. I want to be in a chapter of a history book. I want some kids to actually study me as a blueprint on how to do music business and PR in the African continent, how to maneuver on a digital platform, digital spaces. I want to be that person. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I feel like that drives me every time because when I look at my, I love Bob Marley. Mm-hmm. And when I look at what he sacrificed, just to speak to the people and just to bring the music to the people, just to preach freedom. Mm. He sacrificed a lot and he lost his life. Mm. So to me, it's like, that's the talent God gave me and I want to be able to do that for people. Mm. I want somebody's life to change for because they watched an episode where Rain was at. Moments in <laughs> <laughs> their life changed um, and maybe they did go get what they wanted to do you know like they did move they woke up took a shower and got into a studio or got and took a paintbrush and started painting i want people to actually say you know what i look, we look up to it because mm-hmm. i look up to a lot of people mm-hmm. i look up to a lot of like the generation that look up to yeah. <laughs> i uh-huh. look up to a lot of people uh-huh. and they did change life so yeah what is the biggest thing that you believe our industry can do, like music industry? Because mm-hmm. you're finding like now, you know how like Ama Piano is being sampled mm-hmm. all over. Then we have like um, music from West Africa, you know, Nigerian music. Yeah. It's now there in America. You have your Chris Brown and they more than mm-hmm. want to. Where are we lacking as Zimbabwe? Where is the Zimbabwe? Why are we not getting there? I think what do you think? The number one thing is we quickly adopt other cultures instead of actually telling our own story. We've got amazing stories here in Zimbabwe, but we quickly then adopt the Bentley life of America, the champagne popping life of America. That's not who we are. Music should be able to relate. I should sit down and hear something about a combi that I'm in and say, Damn, that that makes sense because mm. I'm in a comedy right now. Mm. I should sit down and he and watch a movie about I don't know the Great Zimbabwe and say, you know what, we actually need to take the kids for holiday. Mm. Why are we not telling our own stories and quickly tell other people's stories? Ama piano is popping, mm. and what do Zimbabweans do? They jump on it, and then now every credit is going to South Africa. Mm. It's not coming to us. When we pop and use Ama Piano to pop, people out there will just say, oh, South Africa. They won't say, oh, from Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. So what can we need to actually tell our own Zimbabwean stories? We need to sample our own music. Like there's a lot of, mu- a lot of sounds. Like, come on, Shakira went on the Super Bowl and used Sungura. Mm. A whole Shakira. But it's also we <laughs> stay away from it like it's a taboo or mm-hmm. something. So I feel like Zimbabweans really need to get in touch with their originality, who they are, and resonate with the people that are on the ground. You cannot shout out any other country besides where you're from. Mm. And the people that you actually resonate with are the ones that will propel you to go up. Like, look at Taylor. It was South Africa that made a big fuss about her brand Mm. so much that she blew up. Mm. Master KG, the same. 
here in Zimbabwe, we run away from our own media. We run away from our own people. We don't want to do charity work. We just want people to ask for selfies. What are we giving back to the community? Because it's the community that is going to propel us to go up. So I feel like we need to get in touch with who we are, with our culture. Sit down and ask your go-go. Go-go, when you were growing up, what, what, what happened? What was the thing? And write a song about that. Write a film about that. Because how many other go-go's would then resonate with that? You know, we need to be original. But yo, brand love. We, <laughs> we need a brand love. I think we, we need a campaign. Hmm. And we need <laughs> unity as well. Like this whole Dinitinichimoti thing, for me, it's ridiculous because are we not one nation? Are we not one people? You know? Tisutinichimoti makes more sense because it means if I take your market and my market and their market and their market, it's now like a whole noise, mm. you know? But just your own market won't take you anywhere. And people don't understand that. So we fight now within the borders and we are fighting for. What exactly? We're fighting within the borders, fighting for Chimoti. That is not going to take us out there. Mm. And you're like, I'm the biggest artist in Zim. But you could be the biggest artist in Africa, though. If you're, imagine if I'm to put out a song and everybody in this room posts about this song. How many times have you seen an artist put out a song and other artists repost? You never see it happening. You never see it happening. Yeah, you're, you're right. You see. So why are we not united to say, we are pushing this artist. This artist, today is this artist's day. Let's do that. Let's push on our social medias, on our medias and everything and everything. Let's push. We don't do that. Rather, I would rather go put a song out to put out your song. That's what we do here. So it's, it's a sad situation. <laughs> so what do you think we should do? How do we get around that? Because I think it's, it's an mm. important topic. I mean, we might like laugh and say, yeah. But I think it's an important topic, and I think it's not just music. I think it's mm -hmm. everywhere. It's everywhere. Once you start doing that, it will go down, and it will change mm -hmm. lives in different spheres. How? What ideas do you have? Or what? How do you think we can do that? I think the young generation is doing is doing quite good because they are collaborating. The young influencers are collaborating on their social medias, TikTokers, and they don't they don't have kaku. Dinindoga, they are collaborating. I I don't know if the older generation can actually tap into that, but I feel like let's start <laughs> at the young age. Mm. If you're because gonna do future. yeah, if you're gonna do workshops, if you're gonna do you know these podcasts are very very important because they are going to help definitely. So if we do more of these interactions and these conversations, I think we can be able to get into a few heads, knock some. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Ignorance is the biggest killer in Zim. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Ignorance. So if we are able to conversate more, I think we'll be able to create a generation that actually wants to work together. Mm. Yeah. I like that. And I think we should create those platforms mm -hmm. to allow those conversations to, to take place. Yeah. Just to... I just want a, a few lessons. When you, okay, one, I'm gonna divide them into a few sections. <laughs> As a talent manager, mm -hmm. lessons for artists, okay, and then life lessons that you have learned, mm -hmm. and then lessons for those who want to become talent managers. Okay. So we're looking at three different people. As an artist, looking at the artist, the life lesson, the life lessons, and, and then the birth. yeah, lessons for artists. Um, don't archive that song. You never know which song is your big break. So create, 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 put it out, put it out, put it out. Just because it has one viewer doesn't mean that it didn't change your life or it didn't influence anything. And the, and the good thing about archiving your songs online is when you do get your big break, everybody else is going to come back to those songs and they're going to pop regardless. So put out that song and don't shy away from putting out your music. This one is very hard. The mm. second one. The second one is very hard. Your life is not No, as an artist. As an artist. It's very hard. Mm. Everybody oh. goes through struggles. Mm. I feel like they should know that. And it's the self-doubt is too much. 
everybody goes through life struggles. Mm-hmm. Everybody self doubts. You're not alone. And I really feel like if I could hug them all <laughs> and let them know that you definitely are not alone. The pressure that comes with entertaining people, the people that are being entertained may not understand the pressure ju- that just comes from making a song or the pressure that comes from going on stage and actually but those people have anxiety and depression and for me it makes me sad because I can actually see it and how do I tell you that I'm also going through the same thing you just need to push on you just need to know that you're not on your own and you know the digital world is not a good place sometimes it's very toxic the comment sections sometimes are very hurtful and maybe don't look at them if you know Kuti, you're not going to be able to handle it, don't look at them because, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to break. You don't want to break at a, at, at a point where your career is taking off. Mm-hmm. So to artists, you're not, a, <laughs> you're not alone. Make the music. I mean, I would give flowers to artists because Zimbabwean artists really are trying, to be honest. They really are trying. And most of them are coming from a very harsh background. And they're trying to change their life, change the parents' life. And you can really see it from the way they're, you know, working hard. But to fall into the drugs, to fall into the depression, to fall into the... It's it's very hard, but I know they're trying to look for an escape. So maybe as fans, we should be more loving and more considerate. How, how that my favorite song got to be my favorite song is because they pushed through and we need, really need to give them more flowers. Stay away from girls. <laughs> Women. Oh, my God. Women. <laughs> Hear me. <laughs> that thousand dollar you just made will go. <laughs> no, 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 no. Mm. Women will archive the voice notes, the pictures, the whatnots, the whatnots. Women will just stay away from women. Like, they throw... I, I handle accounts. They throw themselves you know, at, at these guys. And sometimes you can tell, stay away from them. I mean, stay away from them. <laughs> That's all I can say. Because most careers end because, you know, you now have a rape case, you now have baby mama drama, you now have ABC. So maybe just stay away from them and stick to one girl if that's possible, if you're going to stick to three girls, marry them and have a body car. I mean, just stay away from things that, because I'm trying to get money from your career. So if you mess around, <laughs> you're killing two, <laughs> two, <laughs> two <laughs> so, yeah, so stay away from them. And my life lessons, whew, what could I, I don't know, my life lesson, work hard. Be consistent. I think I said consistency a lot. So that's a very, that's a key word. Be consistent. And just know that, you know, life is not fair. Things happen, move on. I think for me, that's been the the most way I have to accept certain things from happening. Heartbreaks, uh, betrayals. I just have to be like, oh, well, you know. But also talk about it. If you have somebody you can confide in, that's important. Talk about it because bottling them up, trust me, I I fell in her whole phase of not being able to leave the house, you know, and it was very hard for me because I didn't want to die, but I didn't want to be there at the same time. So me then having somebody to talk to and actually say, okay, this is what I'm going through, even though it feels like it's stupid, still say say it to somebody because it's very important. Things, Things happen and I had to learn. Um, I was watching a sermon that was saying, even when you don't know how to pray, just say, I don't know, but you know. I don't know, but God, you know. And you can say amen, because that's enough. For you to acknowledge that you do not know, it's enough for God to work through, because that's where, when you don't know, that's when the faith starts kicking in now, because you don't know, but I'm letting you take over. You don't know, but you, I don't know, but you know. So that's you saying, you know, you know the plans you have for me, plans to pass for me. So I'm going to let you do that. So I feel like it's important for you to accept when things are hard, but don't give in. Just say, God, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know what I'm going to eat tomorrow, but you know. And then wake up and go. 
things will just fall. Things will always fall into place. Yeah. And then for the people that are trying to get into artist management, you need to be patient, uh, research, before you just get into something, research. There's a lot of, you know, people, I've always met people that say, no, but I don't have money for school. I was a photographer for a whole year in 2019. I didn't go to school for photography. I just picked up a camera, went on YouTube, and learned how to, and I started getting paid. I didn't go to school for it. So don't make excuses, you know. Some of us didn't have like a good, um, good, good finances to do the things that we would do. I would just sit on Google. If I have, and what I do in those two minutes, I was making sure it was going to get me paid. So, yes, nobody has money for school. People are broke. People don't have money. But if you are able to access internet, if you are able to access books, read, read, read. Anzi, the most successful people in life have a library, not a big screen. So then teach yourself how to read a cha- at least a chapter a day. Read and then put it into work and actually make money from it. And my testimony is I did photography for Andy Morizo's Valentine's Day <laughs> shoot. And I got paid. And it was that picture was being used in Head Out, in all social media platforms. And I didn't go to school for that to happen to me. So I know education is very important, right? But I feel like that statement also discourages a lot of people that want education but can't afford to get education. So when you can at least get a book, when you can at least get an internet connection, learn. And then, you know, perfect your skill, get into the management thing and and also managing is very easy. It's just like you can wake up with no degree and just say, hey, I want you to go to the studio. <laughs> I want you to do ABC. I think we should do this. I think, you know, that's, it's, it's very easy. But when you do then get the money, please go to school. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. a good one. I like that. Actually, it's very important. And I like the mm. fact that you say, well, you don't need money. But I think that's an excuse that a lot of people use that they don't have money. Yeah. So to close us all. I have five fun questions to ask you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite color and why? My favorite color. My favorite color is blue. Why? I really don't know why. I think it's a calming color. But somehow I want a purple car. So oh. I wouldn't want to have any other purple thing in life. <laughs> a purple car. I know. A purple sure. Bima to be. <laughs> M3. Ooh. For those that know. Because your okay. girl is a Beamer girl. Um, but my favorite color is blue, but I'm fascinated with purple on a car. Okay. That's that's what I can say. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing the purple car. <laughs> yeah. Your favorite animal and why? <sighs> my favorite animal is the fox. I know. Why a fox? I'm f i am wanna meet I wanna see one. I've never seen one. But I also feel like they're very mischievous, but in their mischief, they get they get the goal, they get the work done. So whether it's on its own or it's just working with a pack, but they if they're determined to make a kill, even when they know Kuti, okay, this is their lions or well, is there lions with foxes? I don't know. I don't want to mix up the jungle and wall <laughs> and thing. But then even they know Kuti, there's another predator or whatever, they still get the goal. And there's just and the laugh. Have you heard of fox laugh? <laughs> that would be a dope thing to. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I didn't even think you'd get this. It's just dope no, really. I, I really like the fact that their mischief gets get, gets the job done. Yeah. yeah. So it's like they're more awakened with mischief. So you, imagine if a fox was humble. We wouldn't hear like all those stories or whatever, or the folk tales about foxes and anything. It's always their mischief that, mm. that gets the job done. So sometimes, you know, there's, there's, there's good in the bad. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, true. What are you reading currently? Well, I'm repeating Napoleon Hill, um, The Rules for Success. Well, it's not really a book, but it's just like a, whole, a list of uh, rules of success thingy. And I'm meditating on the one that even if people offer you money, take it. Because I used to be the girl that, you know, if people say, oh, yeah, I've got some money to take up. Like, no, I'm independent. I don't want your monies. 
oh no, you guys want to use me or you would want a favor. Oh, now I'm taking it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Because it's like, I didn't ask you for it, Mm. but if you offer me money, I'm taking it. Because, you know, money is money. We need money. (laughs) Yeah. What's your favorite movie of all time that you've watched? Jurassic World. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Oh my God, I love Chris Pratt. Wow. Okay. It's crazy. (laughs) Jurassic World. My brother says to me, you watch movies that will never happen. Where will you see a dinosaur? Mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't care, man. Like, T-Rex? T-Rex is... <laughs> T-Rex is just no. off your imagination. <laughs> right? Way too no, close. so I watch Jurassic World every night. It's I know. Like, it's either I'm watching the one, the two, the three, but I'm watching something every... Even if I don't finish it, I have to have like a... But I do... My favorite series is Friends. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not fun. My favorite series is mm. Friends. Mm. And your favorite genre of music? I mean, you're into music, but what's your favorite genre? Your reggae. favorite song? Reggae. Favorite so song? I don't have a... Can I say a favorite song? I've got a favorite artist. Mm. My favorite artist of all time is Dexter Depps. Um, he's a Jamaican artist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a very... If you're a lover girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then um, Bob Bali, uh, Burning Spears. You know, carefully turn. Um, I'll put spicy. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm a, I like reggae and like dancehall, dancehall. Um, the piano for the, you know, the gospel and the, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. My favorite song though. Hmm. Huh. I don't think at the moment my favorite song is actually not a reggae song. It's uh, unwritten by Natasha Burningfield. Mm. This show, you're an official. Mm. Oh my God, I like that one. Yeah, oh, nice. So yeah, it's not actually a, it's a white girl song. But it's nice. I, I <laughs> okay, I used to be one of those people who say like, this white girl is black. But mm. now I just you have just this every year, yeah. everything. Mm. If this was your last day on earth and you're about to transcend. And... Mm. Oh, I like that. I watched the, did you watch like this series called The Hundred where people transcend? No. <laughs> I like that word. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So you're about to transcend. And mm-hmm. um, what is the one thing that you say, you know what, God? I'm ready to come because I have. No, not yet. Not yet. I really want a baby. So if you have a baby. Yeah. Very- yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting one. I know. We packed our bags. We're going to the airport. Mm-hmm. We have our passports. Which country are we going to? Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Yeah, I'm fascinated with their little, the little, little, the food, and I'm fascinated. Wow. Asia, any country in Asia, but Hong Kong. Like I'm fascinated, honestly. Mm. Have you seen the way they dress? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to I wanna try that. Okay. I, wanna, I really want to. And I feel like they've got the craziest marketing, the billboards. I know. They're amazing. I want to see that in person. Wow. Mm. Your last word to our viewers and our listeners? Oh, guys, be kind, be humble, love. When you hate, it takes away the love that you have. So make sure so make sure you get mad and then not be mad for a long time. So don't hate, but get mad a little bit, which is okay. You know, people that say don't get mad, anger is uh, no no, get mad cuz you know, things you're getting mad, you're angry. Show that emotion but don't show it for too long and don't let it turn into hate. Mm. Yeah. I love that. I love that. <laughs> love, love, love. Yeah. So to our viewers and to our and listeners Love, love, love. Is it going to the week? Love, love, love. And love. thank you for loving us, for loving moments, and for continuing to subscribe. Please love by sharing <laughs> and just continue to send the message around. Thank you and see you next week.